The last impression is a lasting impression. We can't emphasize this enough. And I told you before the, the nice, wonderful, flowery stuff that you have that you wanted to start out with your, uh, your email with before and you're thinking, which is even if I'm sitting down to write an email, I'll find myself writing some wonderfully beautiful things as I'm working my way through the thought pattern for the email. I'll end up cutting and pasting that and putting it last. In 2008, I'm at a conference being held by the Gallup organization which has been polling human beings about how they feel about stuff for like 8 billion years. The Gallup organization is the polling organization and they are sitting on a mountain of human nature data. And one of the things that they shared with us, which triggered a lot of thoughts in my brain at the time was, people do not remember things how they happen. People do not remember things how they happen. Please allow me to repeat, people do not remember things how they happen. They remember the most intense moment and the last thing. And with bad communication, the most intense moment is often the last thing. Or if there wasn't an intense moment, they remember the last thing. But human beings remember the last thing. The last impression is the lasting impression. Gallup tells us that. They are sitting on an Alexandria's library of information that backs that up. And it made me remember in the Chase Manhattan bank robbery hostage taking that I negotiated back in 19 whatever. We took over that negotiation when we started taking over how every conversation ended. Hugh McGowan, when he handed me the phone, Hugh McGowan was the commander of the NYPD's negotiation team. He said, you're letting him in the conversations. From now on, I want you to end every conversation, no matter what you end the conversation. We put an aspect of control back into a negotiation that was out of control by making sure we controlled the last impression by simply ending it. Flash that forward to the Tractor Man Siege, which is also in the book. One of my colleagues, Vince D'Alfonso, noticed Tractor Man, Dwight Watson, was hanging up abruptly on our negotiator and he was keeping us from establishing a relationship. And so what did we negotiate? Vince told the negotiator from the park police, from now on, as soon as Dwight gets back on the phone, actually not from now on, your next conversation, you get Dwight to promise to never end a conversation without saying goodbye. Again, this was a last impression issue. And she forced Dwight to terminate the conversation politely. And it put Dwight in a completely different mindset once we negotiated politeness in. The last impression is the lasting impression. And finally, I began to discuss this just a couple of years ago with Cindy Mori, who is Oprah's booker, still is, and has been her booker for over 19 years. And we're kicking it around. And she says, yeah, well, in the entertainment industry, it's usually in a limo, out in a taxi. Once they've gotten what they want from you, they don't care how they treat you. But under Oprah, it's always been in a limo, out in a limo. And Oprah and everybody on her staff has always been determined that no matter how it went, no matter how it goes in the interaction, no matter what led us up, people have to feel valued at the end. The last impression is a lasting impression. Oprah, with that philosophy, has successfully dealt with the most difficult people on the planet. And you can't cite an argument that Oprah is in. And it's really easy to say, yeah, but it's Oprah and nobody's gonna wanna argue with Oprah. Now, Oprah has been in plenty of conversations and is, is taking people to the woodshed who are not used to being taken to the woodshed plenty of times. And Oprah and everybody that works for her, or anybody that's worked for her over a length of time lives by the rule that people feel valued at the end. The last impression is a lasting impression. Your gut instinct is gonna be to write something that's true and nice at the beginning of the email to open it. 
We are not advocating that principally. We're advocating an accusations audit at the beginning of the email. That doesn't mean that what you wrote at the beginning as an, a legitimate positive thing to say, you know, we'd love to have a long-term relationship with you. I'm writing you this email because I would love to work things out and we wanna have a great relationship. That's unequivocally true and it goes at the end of your email. If you're emailing someone to work something out, you in fact want to settle it amicably. You in fact want to have a long-term productive relationship. Those things are completely true. Put them at the end. Where most people screw up is the last thing they say is a parting shot. I mean, people work their way through an email, they get more and more angry as it goes through. And the last thing that they write is the worst thing that they could have could have written. And it is so common. It's stunning that people, we got an email from uh, a number of years ago from a company that we parted company with because they were half. And when the person who was the president sent me an email complaining about changes that we were making, the very last thing she wrote in the email was, you know, we got into this partnership hoping for the best. The last two words were some partnership. And I remember thinking like, how in the world do you end like that? Well, you end like that because that's what human beings do when they let their anger get out of control. And the last impression is a parting shot. We're not we're telling you that's a wrong way to do it. And we're not advocating the sandwich approach either, which is a positive, a negative, and a positive. If you notice, our opening move is the accusations order is the deactivation of the negatives. And the positive thing that you say at the end is the truth. It's not flowery nonsense. And if you're working something out via email, you in fact want a great long-term relationship. That is the truth. <clears throat> 